in season six. It's been a wild ride. I haven't played that many games in FOF, and uh, record is not what we want it to be. Handshake does hit. Flash forward from Total Trash to try to seal this fight out, and it's almost going over. Gandwars rend it apart, and it's a blowout for our Roughly trying to kite out, no but mana. he swaps Kenny in the back line now. Kenny hammer spikes, free hit. Oh my god. Up explode back in, does so much damage, will drop, but three kills going over to the side of INT. Two of them on Kenny hammer spikes. INT feels really good about season six. We feel we are playing very well, especially compared to previous seasons. And we are confident that we are going to win this season. INC is a really good team. They're at the top currently. Uh, one of the players that we need to look out for is Paul Explode. They're fantastic at seeing what the enemy team is doing and uh, kind of figuring out what they're doing wrong and conquer on it. Um, I think they have really good, strong jungler and mid lane presence, which impacts a lot of games. I think Art of Warrior's strength are that they have both like strong players individually, but also like decent macro. Since they are court coached by Sword Blue, you know, please say they're just a just solid team across like the board in like every category. The last match of our INT, we lost. Um, this time coming around, uh, I think it's going to be very different. Uh, I don't think our jungler is going to int at level three. Definitely, he's going to play much better. He has changed a lot. Uh, we as a whole, as a team, has changed a lot. We're coming into the match uh, very revengeful. Uh, we want to win. We want to be the best um, as a team. And our jungler is just definitely getting revenge. Players in a re -re. I think you guys are great players. You gave like Slop Knight like a bit of a rough time in lane. However, I think you guys are still going to get capped today. And uh, I, I expect that the same thing that happened in our last game is going to happen today. I just think INT is in cloud nine right now. Uh, but that cloud is going to come down very soon and it's going to hit really hard. Welcome back to friend or foe everybody week five day two of the heroic league and we are headed straight into game two champ select on the blue side we have in the trees and on the red side we have art of war esports two teams from the top three that I'm excited to see what these two have to bring against each other as always my name is whirler and casting alongside with me again we have Zen. Zen. yeah and um, hyped cannot, it, it does not describe how excited I am for this match. Um, Art of War <laughs> Esports and In the Trees, long uh, heroic league um, competitors. They're looking like some of the top two teams, top three teams in the league. Um, and this is a really critical moment for the, the state of the league. At, um, the last time these two teams went up against each other, In the Trees, um, defeated art of war esports but art of war esports um as they said in the preview vi video are are looking for vengeance in this yeah, game um and also in the trees coming off of uh, their last two games with their first ever losses so sort of perhaps um you know falling back a little bit it's up to them to sort of start their momentum and secure their spot in the first place uh, of this league and you know that title is reliant on this game that is very much so. And with these picks so far, we're getting a lot of juicy details as to what we're going to be seeing against these two. Miss Fortune and Samira so far are the options from the side of, or from the bot lane for both of these teams. Miss Fortune, very popular pick right now for good reason. One of the strongest uh, AD carries in the game right now. And Samira, honestly, I would argue total opposite. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I'm excited to see what what these teams are able to put put together. Um, Misfortune, you know, commonly regarded as the best AD carry on the patch, um, just mm -hmm. incredibly strong both in lane and without. Uh, but you know, Letters not willing to sort, of, you know, back down from a challenge. We feel 
Art of War feels like they have a strategy built around the Samira that they want to showcase. Putting it in with the Leona so you have that engaged support to really lock people down. Um, and I think that, you know, immediately when you pick a character like Samira, you get very excited to see what um, what sort of strategies are, are going to be involved. And actually, we see the Kog'Maw going to be locked in as well for the Ooh. mid lane for Guilty. So this is a very Kog'Maw. exciting changes for Art of War Esports. They put together a spicy one for us today, and I they cannot wait to see did. how it looks. They uh, absolutely yeah. did. I kind of like so far what I'm seeing from both teams. If we want to talk about it a little bit, I do want to get a few things down in terms of uh, we have an entirely identical top lane matchup. Are you expecting these players to play it out the same way we just saw, or are you expecting a completely different output in this game? Well, I think that, um, you know, again, this Mordekaiser, you know, can be powerful uh, either in team fights or in side lanes, but has to pick where they want to go. And mm -hmm. as we saw in the last game, uh, it can be a very uncomfortable lane into the Gangplank just has so much damage, has the range advantage against the Mord. Um, we do see, um, you know, so, some other things to talk about, though. Um, Guilty on this Kogma is very right. exciting. We have seen Guilty absolutely dominate, um, not just in Heroic League, but also playing quite well in Mythic League on Ooh. things like the Zareth, right? That has right. just absolutely crushed lanes and done so much damage. Um, Kog'Maw is very similar to, to Zareth, but crucially doesn't really get online until that level becomes available. So, um, in the trees, being a team that has, you know, very explosive early games with Bow Explode at the helm, I'm excited to see if they're able to maybe, um, punish that pick more than what we've seen people be able to do with the Zareth. Absolutely, and we are ready to get right into game number two of the night, ladies and gentlemen. We will see just what these two teams have to bring as we are looking at, I would, I would say, say one, one of the more fun drafts, drafts I have, have seen so far this week. week. I, I am, am really, really excited, excited to see how picks play out, especially in the bottom lane. Excuse me, bottom lane. Kenny Hammer Spike, a master class at 80 carry and most flash flash hook to begin the game total trash taking it right to the face is going to be taken to half we'll pop the ghost but will not be in any more danger afterwards a good one one getting a summoner out of the horse honestly if i'm art of war esports i take that trade every single time um the flash on nautilus is very critical for you know the the aggression that you'd like to see with a misfortune in that bottom lane and as you've already identified i think that this bottom lane matchup is going to be the number one most important thing in this game um mm. because samira is such a feast or famine champion if samira gets ahead um they can absolutely crush team fights and you know it feels like there's nothing you can do because she has the the aoe wind wall that prevents you know a ton of damage coming out of um, in the tree's composition. Mm -hmm. So with that flash burned, immediately my my eyes for AWE is trying to push that advantage in that bottom side. And I think that's why we see Total Trash starting top side with his jungle clear, because he wants to path bottom and maybe punish the Nautilus. Very smart of Total Trash to do if that is the plan he decides to execute as he clears down towards the bottom side of Vault Noob. Taking a little bit of damage from the Kogma E level one. Pretty good. Kogma stacking up three stacks already, which is honestly what you want to see. The quicker this Kogma gets online, the better for Team Awe. Take this. And speaking of which, level two in the bot lane is coming. And if I've seen Leona Nautilus before, we all know what's coming. And I'm excited to see. We got three more minions until that comes into play. But until then. Looking around at the rest of the map, this top lane matchup, GP isn't really... Ooh, hook thrown out from Nautilus is going to go wide. He who slops is ready for the action. Brock Lee is starting to push a little bit of that advantage that he has over the Mordekaiser, which is exactly what we saw in the last game. But we didn't get to see too many of this or too many key aspects of this matchup. So I am very excited to see that it is happening. Again, Brock Lee, fan favorite in FOF as well. We've seen this guy in plenty of seasons. So we know what's coming when we see Brock Lee 900 on the field. 
With that being said, good poke here from Kenny Hammerspike getting the bot lane together. What are your thoughts here so far as the game continues on? And good poke from Kenny Hammerspike. He's just bringing it down. Good fights here from Brock Lee. What are your thoughts here are so far as this game's playing out? Um, well, you know, I like the attention that you brought to this top side because I think that um, this matchup might play slightly differently than what we saw in the previous game. Um, we see a couple of adaptations coming through. Brock Lee has taken the grasp instead of the first strike, so he's going to be able to sustain longer in the fight against this Mordekaiser. Um, Trolls in you, though, opting for Ghost Flash instead of Teleport. So, um, you know, going to be a little bit volatile if he does get poked out of the lane, might lose some minions, but has the advantage if Trolls in you gets ahead, Broccoli will not be able to escape. Speaking of not escaping, Guilty's in trouble. Yeah, he is. We got Volibear in the mid lane, is going to be able to walk out of the gank unscathed. Uh, evolved the noob, however, taking a lot of poke so far in this lane, and Guilty really hasn't used that much mana for having no mana restore options. Not taking the triple pot. Brought Bow Explode is back up in the top lane. I swear, these two are like a peas in a pod. I love uh, Bo seeing Bow Explode and Brock Lee. I, I think they've always been on in the trees too, which is the most fascinating part because most players, you know, you, you don't really see them stay on the same team, uh, especially after this many seasons. Brock Lee going to get pulled by Trolls and you. This is a good trade for him to take. Is going to uh, end up on it, especially with that shield. Evolved Man. noobs in a sticky situation might have to force the flash if the stun doesn't go through, but it indeed does. Evolved noob gets to save his summoners, but is forced to back out of the lane. Yeah, Brock Lee actually in a very uncomfortable position here. The wave is frozen Ooh, and Trollzing trying to go in. Now the NOS button is hit. Trollzing you is even faster than before. And this is looking pretty bad for Brock Perfect. Lee. If he's not able to get out of this, the Q is all it takes. The flash forward, but the flash to the side will take it. 400 gold will go to the pocket of Trollzing you. But Brock Lee with a very well played flash will earn his 300 back. Yeah, and this is actually a really interesting spot. If Trollzing had access to the teleport, it would be a massive win for him because he teleports to the lane and he holds the freeze. Um, however, this wave will eventually crash, but you can already see that this matchup is more volatile than what we saw in the match uh, previous. Right. But it is very possible for Mordekaiser to get early advantages, and that ghost came in absolute clutch. Blockly, you know, these early levels doesn't have the sustain uh, quite set up, now has access to the sheen, but until then is kind of weak on the gangplank, and so... Um, you know, trolling you, fantastic adaptation, taking the ghost and really pushing the limits of the character. And now Broccoli in a bit of a, a sticky position because he didn't commit the teleport to break the freeze. So trolling um, going to continue to accelerate a lead. This is very true. Is already level six, a level up on the Gangplank. Gangplank opting to use this time to get some vision here in the river. Very smart to use his time. Is going to be behind in the top lane. So Mordekaiser gets to catch up on that missed CS from earlier. Very good news from him. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, we have the Cloud Dragon being secured for Bow Explode. Bow Explode is going to be able to sneak that one and get back up to his top side camp. Yeah, and I really like uh, INT's decision making there. They just, um, you know, just know that uh, there's going to be a bit of a passive Ooh. game here. Neither team doesn't want to commit anything too crazy in bot okay. side because it can be so volatile. That is true. Brock oh, Lee is going to get pulled back. This is not looking good for Brock Lee. He is not going to opt to use the R this time around. Trollsing you is going to hold it for next time, but that could have been a secured kill if Trollsing you did press the button. I think I like this position a little more because Trollsing you now has full control of the lane. On the other hand, Bow Explode is on this side of the map, so can cause pressure. Trollsing you honestly should have just taken the. Uh, I think he should have just taken the opportunity. Well, I mean, with the lack of vision, it can always be scary to commit this yourself to an ultimate, right? Because you're you're trapped in there for, for a good while, and, and you don't necessarily know what's happening outside of your teammates calling stuff. Um, so Behind I think that controlling you, you know, holding off is fine. Bow Explode, Ooh, though. Speaking of which, Bow trap. Explode sneaking into Total Trash's jungle is a level up as well. Total Trash in a bad situation, forced to pop the NOS button, and the E is going to be able to get out of there alive. The E goes down, guilty here to help out. Bow Explode is in a sticky situation as the top side of the map has converged into the jungle. And that is Total Trash going to be taking that win for himself. We take the small victories here in this house. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, I'm surprised that In the Trees didn't back the play as much as perhaps they could have. Um, Evolved Noob, you know, had 
had it's pressure in mid lane, could have maybe walked up. Trollsing you, mm -hmm. though, continuing this advantage topside. Ooh, it's starting to look real rough for Brock. An advantage it is after that, taking over half of his health in one trade. Speaking of which, good trades all around the map for Team uh, uh, Art of War. Honest to God, these solo lanes are doing a good job. Good pull. That's going to be the ulti. Brock Lee is as good as dead this time around. Trollsing, not trollsing, total trash off to the side as well for insurance. But it's not needed because Geico got your back already. It's going to be Brock Lee going down a second time. And we got a different game coming up in this top lane. Yeah, I mean, Trollsing you coming in as a substitute for AWE and absolutely earning uh, his spot today. Like, my goodness. We thought that this game would be defined by this bottom lane matchup, but the fact that Trollsing you is taking a W in this top side is huge. Now setting up for this Ooh. Herald, though. Bow explode, not even paying attention. Oh, He's going to get the steal on Shelly. Shelly is going to be picked up by Bow explode. He's going to be able to get out of that one unscathed miraculously. Coming in with the heist, Bo explodes in and out of that one. I can't believe it. The bear just has no fear. He just he just waddles in, presses the smite key, and just it just leaves. That's, That's incredible. actual poetic technology right there. Smite, exit, and leave. Unstoppable from the ultimate. Saves the flash as well. Honestly, you couldn't ask for a better jungler. <laughs> I mean, that's there's a reason well why Bow Explode has, uh, you know, multiple seasons in a row been been the heroic MVP jungler. Just has been an absolute monster on INT, and and really, um, you know, a huge part of their success is his ability to make decisive action around the map. Um, and, and just knowing that, you know, hey, total trash and trolls in you, they got an advantage in the top side. They're probably going to look to do Rift Herald here, and without ultimates come in here and sneak something that's yeah. the kind of smart decision making that you need to have if you want to be a successful jungler in the heroic league especially seeing how this is one of the top teams in the league tied for first in the trees really not liking what happened the last time versus awe i'm pretty sure it was actually it was awe that took the l right Correct. AWE okay. uh, did lose, yes. So INT are coming back with the same energy given, and this is very unfortunate for Bow Explode. Proactive indeed, but spotted out, and AWE are not buying it at all. He who slops is going to slop the hook. Bow Explode's going to take his leave. Bot side camps up. Mountain Dragon in 30 seconds. Still oblivious to the ward, unable to sweep it as well with the Rift title. So AWE are on him, not, not letting him... Uh, get away with it so he is going to be down a few camps here as hecker and brings himself down to the bot lane as well mountain dragon in 15 seconds and let's see what these guys oh solar flare and cleanse blowing out from kenny hammer spike flashing out oriri is going to get hooked back slops and oriri in the middle oriri taking very low and folks was going to take that one out devastating charge hecker and the ulti is going to be the fear that they needed misfortune is going to take the l as well as bow explode and the cleanup from art of war is beautiful well played, and they earned themselves a dragon out of that one. Yeah, massive play from AWE. Bow Explode wants to pass bottom. Oh, evolve noob. This is what we want to see. This is take take your victories where you can get them. Give them the dragon. Take back a kill. That e that's even better, honestly, because setting Samira behind in any regards is a good is good news. However, Samira did get violently ahead off of that play. So it sort of evens out. But the further behind or ahead you put Samira matters indefinitely in this game. And I mean, I mean, speaking to that play, AWE just looks more prepared for this early game. You know, they're, they're faster on the collapse. Guilty gets the wave shove, so is able to show up to the bot side play faster than Evolve Noob. Um, and additionally, you know, they had that phenomenal probably placed by Oriri, who spotted out Bo Explodes' play. They know that Bo has the Rift Herald. He wants to make action happen. He wants to throw down the Herald and then take the Dragon. So he shows mm -hmm. up bottom to try and get more, um, and they just collapse and completely counter it and are now um, significantly uh, up mm -hmm. in this game. Absolutely, and Bo Explodes going for the same play again. Has Rift Herald coming down in 15 seconds about... So he's got to make the play now, is going to force it into the bot lane. Hasn't dropped her just yet, but doesn't need to either because they're not really fighting back. Don't have the numbers to fight back either. Only two players on the map, especially in the bot side. This is looking pretty good for in the trees if they're able to get this. Rift Herald does spawn, not in time enough to take the tower, but enough for them to take the tower as it is down to one plate. Minions are tanking and this should be first tower of the game. 
Yeah, this is the ideal that you would like to see from a first Rift Herald. Um, first Rift Herald, if played optimally, should secure you a full five plates, but you have to really commit to it and make sure that you make full use of it. Um, so even though uh, it is INT who is not going to pick up that second dragon, they're very happy to take full use of that first um, thing and give five plates of gold worth over to Kenny Hammerspike, who, I might remind you, is on the best 80 carry on the patch. Um, very you know, will do incredible things with that gold once they're able to complete those those early items. Does back and opt to finish the Berserker's Greaves before finishing the Mythic item, which is still okay, especially given how close Kenny Hammerspike is to the Mythic. Uh, and, I mean, or on the other hand, or opposite side, on the other hand, Oriri roaming down to the mid lane, not going to be able to gank Evolve the Noob just yet. Evolve Noob does have access to the Flash, so it is a little more safer than intended. That being said, the roam is called off, and they are going back into a neutral. Let's talk yeah, about I... itemizations real quick. Um, I do want to point out that instead of Riftmaker Rush, we have a Rylize Ghost Mordekaiser, which honestly is even scarier, if you ask me. Uh-oh. Yeah, can't really talk about that because total trash. Total trash. Turn back into the hook is going to be exactly that. Cool. All right, back to the Rylai's Mordekaiser. Nothing happening here. Speaking of which, perfect transition. Brock Lee is taking a trade into Trolls and You. The Rylai's is speaking for itself right now. Brock Lee in some trouble. The ghost wasn't even pop. Bow explode up to help. Ulti is up for Trollsing. He is safe. Is able to ward off the gank, and that is going to be that. Yeah, I think that this is incredibly smart itemization from Trolls and You because. Um, as we just saw in that last clip, if Mordekaiser can stick to a person, they do incredible damage. Gangplank has a range advantage, but if you can close that gap and keep them in the zone, it can be really troublesome. Oriri now getting with the the hook. Oriri is going to be down, and Total Trash is going to be ulted. Evolve Noob forced to flash out. Total Trash stunned up is going to be cleaned up. Trolls and you ulting the Volibear is going to be able to juke him out. Gets pulled back. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Evolve Noob get cleaned up by the Kog'Maw. Hey, he who slops is in a pretty similar situation. Trollsing you back to the real world, though. Exploded running for his life. How far will he get? Far enough. And that's going to be that. And Rift Herald is still up, but I don't know if they're going to be opting to take it. Very good fight. And it looks like in the favor of Art of War. Yeah, AWE just coming up with victories left and right. They make the smart decisions. You can see both supports knowing that that second Rift Rift Herald is on the map, they roam up, uh, but ultimately at the end of the day, they're making full use of their item advantage that they've already gotten. Oh, Explode now caught! Speaking of which, he went back in, I don't think it was the right decision, turns back on Oriri, is gonna get stunned up, a Kog'Maw did not commit, Bow Explode Flash. jumping back in, thinks he can get him, Oriri flashing out, Bow Explode in a sticky situation, gets pulled back, shut down, going to the horse, and that's gonna be more for Art of War as Evolved Noob TP'd back into the fight using that ward over there. Is gonna get flash forward, slowed up by Guilty. Very well played, Trolls and you is in range to E. Evolved Noob's in a sticky situation. Is able to narrowly avoid the E. That was actually very hard to see. Very well played by him. Puts down the slow, does not get the stun. Is able to look like he's getting out alive. Trollsing it barely misses the Rylai's proc, so Evolved Noob does get out with his life. Very risky play from him, but does see the light of day at the end. Yeah, incredible escape from Evolved Noob also means that they don't get the Rift Herald, but Letter's now in trouble. But wait, there's more, and there's Letter's going in with the EQ, is going to get Misfortune ulted, flashing out, barely living, trolling you, tanking a little bit of that, narrowly avoiding the Nautilus hook. But the E from Misfortune is going to slow him up, Victor is going to be able to take that one with the laser, and that's a Hextech Dragon that they're able to converge onto, and that's exactly what INT needs to turn this game around after what Art of War just did. Yeah, I cannot believe that INT at the end of this extended path. We started at the Rift Herald, <laughs> and now we end the play at the Dragon with a single death. A <laughs> what very a jarring narrative and by the players. And it's not even the team that is ahead that walks away, you know, with the reward. Um, you know, <laughs> trolling you paths a, a little bit unfortunately, like, into the Misfortune E and manages to get picked up by Evolve Noob. Um, you can see, though, that both teams uh, are really valuing these objectives, which I think is smart, um, because they need to try and, and get generate an advantage from these neutral advantage 
neutral uh, objectives. If you look at these two teams, they scale about as well as one another. So the main way that you're going to get a lead is either getting a bunch of kills or stacking those dragons and getting those Rift Heralds. And that's already what we see these teams focusing on. Absolutely. And speaking of which, transferring right onto the Rift Herald, second Rift Herald of the game is Bow Explode, able to secure almost all of the objectives minus one. Ariri jumping into the pit. They got something to say. AWE is closing in and the fight has begun. The Gangplank Alt is dropped and that is going to be a bald noob getting caught and destroyed. Bow Explode half in the midst of the field. Kenny's here. But the bot lane, Kenny Hammerspike has joined the fray. Ariri is going to be taken low, but a double kill for Guilty and they're going to turn right on Kenny Hammerspike who is alone and vulnerable. We got Brock Lee flashing out off to the side and he who slops going to sacrifice his life for the greater good. Rock Lee barely getting out, but that is going to be a four for one fight for Art of War. And they pick up the Rift Herald, an absolute disaster for INT. I really appreciate how much they're trying to push the tempo of this game, but when you go for that play without your ultimates available, it just becomes incredibly difficult. If Kenny Hammerspike has, um, you know, the, the Misfortune ult available, you can absolutely take that fight, but without it... It's just too difficult. Guilty gets on there, uh, you know, uses consistent DPS from the Kog'Maw ultimate, able to burst down members before the remaining members of INT get into the play. And ultimately, um, that's going to be a 3,000 gold lead plus Herald for the side of Art of War. That is a very well-played fight from them, getting them the advantages they need. Kog'Maw's online, has a fully stacked tier, has the loot in Zeko, is ready for that upgrade, and that's going to be the hugest power spike of their team. Kogma is level 11, has the range on the ultimate, almost uh, closer to level 16, which is the maximum, which is the maximum range. But right now, 11 is all you need to get it going. And Kenny Hammer spikes forced to flash out of this engage. He who slops is going to Spider-Man his way out. AWE going for a sneaky engage, but is going to be escaped and uh, with minor damage and summoner spells expended. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't pop the Rift Herald just to just to open up the, the mid turret, but opting instead to go ahead and go for the recall. Um, Total Trash had a ton of money in the inventory, wanted to back that up. But um, as you say, you know, Guilty has looked absolutely incredible on this Kog'Maw. Sitting pretty at 4-0 and 4. And this is something that INT is going to need to figure out a solution to. Because with Kog'Maw online, they can't necessarily sit back and take... Um, you know, like slow traits because they're going to get poked out um, when we fight around these objectives. So they need to be the ones who are decisive and, and making action happen. Um, mm. But at the same time, like trying to engage into a Leona is not exactly appealing. No, uh, it's so, not. so it's on INT to try and set up sneaky plays here. Bow Explode Ooh, trying to look for plays. something. Here we go. AWE does have the devastating charge. Gets he who slops. He who slops is taken low. Pops the ulti on Guilty. Guilty is just out of range of the Misfortune ulti. Is going to turn around on two Bow Explode. Bow Explode on three. Taken very low, but getting three of them pretty low. Kenny Hammer Spike. All he has is auto attacks and a dream. And I think that's going to be that. Bow Explode is going to be taken for free. And AWE are going to take that treasure and get back on the map before Dragon Spawn. Yeah, I mean, the thing that's crazy to me as well is that AWE is winning these fights just by being up a person. Right. They're, as a reminder, they're the team that's down uh, turrets, right? You would tend to think that they would be the team that has somebody stuck in a side lane, unable to join these fights. But in reality, it's um, it's INT who you know don't seem to have the full five-man stack together, the four-man stack required to win these plays. And now they're going into this next dragon fight at a huge deficit of about three and a half thousand gold. Three and a half thousand gold, no ultimates at the ready, 20 seconds on the dragon. Decisions have to be made. No, almost no buttons to press on the side of INT, which is not good to see with dragon coming up in 10 and a Hecarim in the neighborhood already. And that's going to be mid tower taken very low. Rift Herald's still at the expense. And I think he's just going to pop it and walk straight to the uh, pit. As he who slops, taking some wards. Bald Noob's going to get some poke. And a good hit on Guilty is or Letters is going to start the fight, taking about to half. Meanwhile, on the other side, Total Trash got on Evolved Noob. Evolved Noob running for his life, taken very low. One person low on, or two people low on the side of each team. And they're going to start the dragon. AWE is ready. Ja or not Jaffy, Brock Lee up in the top lane pushing a top tower is going to push and look to TP 
into this fight if they decide to take it. He is not. They're giving this dragon, second dragon of the game, even in objectives, even in quite literally everything except for pressure. Yeah, I mean, AWE doing a great job of controlling space there and, and continuing to push their advantage. Um, I think that INT, you know, they, they want to try and commit to these fights and try and make these plays happen, but at this point, they're just, you know, slightly behind on the move. They're slow to move in, so to test for the river. Um, and additionally, you know, the itemization makes it difficult as well. Um, Evolved Noob has smartly picked up this Banshee's Veil, which allows him to survive the fight. Um, mm -hmm. you know, against Ariri and Guilty. But the counterpoint to that is he doesn't actually do quite enough damage to truly threaten Letters. Um, and so Letters, you know, able to walk away from what would have been like a full Victor combo and, and be totally fine. Right. Um, means... saved, the, saved the lifeline passive too. Yeah, and it means that AWE can just continue pressure on this map. And again, you know, I, I don't like INT's chances in this game if they're unable to make proactive plays with He Who Slops and Bow Explode. They need to get stuff done, um, because if they don't, this Kog'Maw is going to continue to spiral out of control. And that's the problem when Kog'Maw gets online like this. You, he's too far for any of these champions to really press buttons on him. Speaking of which, Total Trash is going to try to get on top of He Who Slops. He Who Slops, a little caught out right now, is looking to get out of here, is going to knock up Total Trash, get him with a stun taken very low this is a lot of commitment for a support but he who slops is indefinitely going down awe picking off members of int like their trees and they're going to keep pushing down mid lane and keep this pressure going baron is still an option for uh, awe so we'll see exactly what they're going to decide to do but with vision on them taking this red let's see what evolve news tries to do he just tries to steal it not going to succeed total trash is going to find bow explode not really much happening after that as well, or much after that as Trolls and you pushes in the top one. Yeah, I'd like to see, um, you know, at this stage of the game, I think you have a sufficient enough advantage as Art of War that you can start to look at that Baron. And you can already see that they've transitioned some of their vision up to that top side, but I think that they would like to continue to put the pressure on. Um, meanwhile, you know, on the side of INT, I think that they... Uh, need to figure out a solution. Now, one thing that they could try to do, because Evolve Noob and Broccoli are, are decently farmed, you can choose to attempt to split the map here. Um, you have decent side laners. Kog'Maw is not a character that you want to send into a, into a side lane to solo stuff out. Um, mm -hmm. So you could try to apply some split push pressure and maybe prevent or, or avoid taking these five-on-five -five fights. Um, but even that is a tough at because Trollsing You has looked extremely proficient on this Mord uh, and has now completed that, that Riftmaker and is looking scarier by the minute. Scarier by the minute indeed, and it looks like Lichbane's next on the menu, if that's the correct... Uh, if those are the correct items for it, I'm not too sure. I think it might be Blasting Wand instead. I'm not too entirely sure what that item is. Because uh, I don't really see Aether Wisp anymore, except for Lichbane. Uh, with that being said, Letters in the mid lane is going to get the Leona ult onto He Who Slops. Letters is the twin point of this fight, but Kenny Hammer Spike dropping the ulti. Everyone taking very low. Bow exploded to jump on Letters. They get Letters indeed. Hecarim oh ulti my out. Goodness. Get the Jaffe barrel. Broccoli. It's going to pick up two. And that's a triple kill. I said Jaffe Broccoli. Then his right name. That was a beautiful play from the gang playing. Securing three people, turning this game on its head in the trees, taking Baron now. This is an exciting turn of events for this game. Yeah, INT has that decisiveness, and you can never truly count them out of a game. What a fantastic play. Initially, Ariri is thinking about going on to Kenny Hammerspike, but I have to credit he who slops in that play. He uh, zoned out letters so much, forced letters to you know spend all of their cooldowns trying to just run away from this nautilus and that lives leaves them with no buttons to survive bow explode coming in on the ultimate getting the stun killing the carry uh and from there it's just a numbers game broccoli phenomenal um barrels manages to secure a double kill and all of a sudden they are back into this game with 30 seconds on the dragon they need to decide if they want to fight for it or continue to push with that baron I think that they're fighting for it, looking at the way they're running. And with the Hextech Dragon, it makes it so much easier to get back onto the map. Both of these teams are ready to go at it again. Looking at it from or looking at it from this standpoint, which I can coming up, the fight will happen very soon. 
I'm very excited to see exactly what unfolds here after seeing that. This is anyone's game. Yeah, Kenny Hammer Spike, no access to Flash in this battle, so could be in a bit of a danger zone. AWE trying to set up here. Looking pretty good. We know what buttons are going to start each fight. We know exactly what we're looking for. We know exactly what we're excited for. Dragon was poked and started. <laughs> He's not happy either. And it is looking like a standstill so far. No team is pulling the trigger just yet as they're starting to inch. AWE starting to inch at the Dragon ever so slightly. Who who slops. Not pressing the button yet. Not turning 5,000 on the Dragon. They got to make a move here pretty soon. Dragon healing a little bit. Taking out a 4,000. Trolls in you. They're a little split right now between the Dragon and this fight. But Trolls in you low. taking the jungler out. Guilty taking low. And Kenny oh Hammer's fighting the that's... ultimate. That's exactly what NT, NT needs. And that's exactly what they're doing as Evolve News is going to go down to Kog'Maw ultimate or Kog'Maw passive. But the rest of INT are going to be able to clean that one up. Never mind because it's turned back on its head after being turned back on its head. Flash over the wall is not going to be able to steal the, or does steal the dragon, is able to take it, is able to secure the third dragon of the game, but Trolls in you is able to put a stop to it with the final kill of the fight. What an insane dragon fight between wow. these two teams. You could see that they were so nervous to start something because they knew uh, that this was going to be a critical moment. And at the end of the day, Nine the players fight. on the rift uh, get sent to the Shadow Realm. Only Trolls in you fight. stands victorious. We but... were hyping Bow Explode up for the steal on the rift earlier, but that was an impressive flash smite. I almost thought he missed that. Yeah, I mean, Bow Explode, clutch player, uh, secures that dragon, and that is so huge for the chances of this team uh, to be successful. If they're able to unlock that Hextech soul, they get that slow. Um, attached to all of their abilities, suddenly Misfortune uh, goes from being like pretty strong, you know, a, a threat if she presses the R key to being an absolute menace because now absolutely. you're slowed in the bullet time and that is absolutely not where you want to be. Devastating. Um, so, so securing that dragon um, is absolutely huge for them. Um, but you can already see these teams are neck and neck. This is still anyone's oh game God. right now. This is exactly what I wanted to see between these two teams. Top three teams are top three teams for a reason. And INT and AWE are no strangers to the trade. It is looking pretty good with Baron coming up in two bucks and 30 cents. It's not looking too, too bad for these setups as both teams have ample amounts of time to reset, get the tempo back and get these objectives going as things start to respawn. Uh, in terms of pushing power, I still think they should continue with their one three one because I think that was working pretty well. I think that they were getting very good options when they were able to uh, get most of AWE's carries split up. Look at this. They're trying to set up a trap for Trollsing Yu. He doesn't know. They're doing such a good job at this trade, and it's not looking like Trollsing is going to bite the bait. But I do respect the attempt as a or as a or AW and INT claw their way through this game, neck and neck in gold between 200 at 31 minutes. Um, so taking stock before the next sort of objective spawn, we're gonna see teams try and uh, you know reestablish vision. Uh, Evolve Noob needs to go home, needs to complete this death cap because that's when. Um, this victor starts to become unlocked on the map and starts to do enough damage to actually threaten Samira. Um, we talked about Samira being like a a short ranged carry that can be kind of difficult to to handle. Um, the the disadvantage of the short range is that you can get blown up from the AOE from the likes of Rockley and Evolve Noob. Um, so moving forward, I'm looking forward to that. That being mm -hmm. said, Letters, though, um, looking very strong, has completed those three full items. Um, yeah. Looks to be, you know, if AWE is able to continue to take momentum in these team fights, uh, if they're able to start them with a re, re you know, getting a stun off and then uh, get Letters that first ultimate access, I think that AWE uh, is in a position to win these team fights, but it's still anyone's game. Absolutely. And Kenny Hammer Spike after that fight. 1-3-9, and honestly, not the most impressive score, but I've been seeing the most impressive damage come out of this guy so far. With 1-3-9, and is still keeping up massively in items, and the three item misfortune on this patch is probably one of the scarier things I've seen on the Rift recently. 
With that being said, Baron coming up in 15 seconds. Both teams crowding around, ready to take action on this. Total trash. Good ward clearing from this. Darkening the river for in the trees. Looking like they're in trees now. As yeah, so AWE sets up around the river. Yeah, in the trees in an interesting position here because they have access to teleport. Um, whereas AWE does not, right? They have... Right. AWE has the teleport on the Kog'Maw, but that's not the person you want to send in the side lane. So, um, INT, it is their initiative to try and set up side lane pressure, uh, and then try to pressure the uh, opposing AWE team away from that objective by setting up those side lanes. And you already see, um, you know, we've sort of transitioned Dragon spawning in 30 seconds, and that is where teams want to decide this game. So they're going to go ahead and reset now and play for that objective instead. Absolutely, 19 seconds on that last mount, or that's actually Hextech Dragon. I don't know why it says mountain, but regardless, last one of INT if they're able to pick it up. Sole point for AWE if they are able to flip that coin. Both teams are here. Hecarim off in the wings, but is Hecarim so not too far away? Dragon is up. Can be started, but is not at the time. Art of War is watching and waiting. They want to get in. They want to blow this fight up. And if we get another banger one like we did five minutes ago, if it's anything like that one, we are in for a treat. Yeah, INT has the mid lane push this time, so they're able to get a little bit of gold denial. Ooh, but here we go. Solar Flare is on GP. GP flashes out with the cleanse. Oh, the bullet Ulti time. from Kenny Hammer Spike is the going to be a three. Bullet time is looking beautiful, and that's going to be the oh last. Oh my god! Or that's going to be four members of Art of War dropping like flies just for the price of he who slops. That's a trade we like to see as Evolve Noob. One going to the mid laner will get the stun. Q comes back up, is going to be able to get the Lich Brain proc. The E is not going to be enough. Flash over. Guilty is running. The E might be in enough range, and all oh, the Zanyas is perfect. The Q is not going to be in enough range. He tried to auto the minions for the proc. It's not going to be enough. And instead, Guilty, using the power of minions in a tower, is going to be able to pick up the robot. Yeah, and you can see the decisiveness of INT uh, coming into play here. You can tell that this is a veteran team. Um, Oriri and, and Total Trash trying to make something happen. They split the gun a little bit too early. Um, only catching one with the Solar Flare means that Kenny Hammerspike is able to freely set up for a massive ultimate. And it doesn't matter that ledgers can block the hits if your entire frontline falls anyways. Um, ultimately, that's going to mean Baron picked up... Uh, Hextech Soul picked up for the side Ooh. of INT, and they now have a decisive lead. They got a clean new double buffs to wear here on the Rift tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Oriri's not letting this one happen either. The cleanse is going to be popped from GP a little early. He's looking like he's in a pretty sticky situation as Guilty is going to be able to take the loot and frog and the ultimate and scoop that kill up for himself. 10 and 2 on the slug. Good lord, Guilty. Yeah, I mean, Guilty has just looked so good on this on these artillery champions, and um, you know this is a game where where this Kogma, even though it's incredibly strong, if INT can take decisive fights, um, you know with the advantage that they have, they may be able to defeat it. Um, and Hammer Spike now transitioning down to this bottom side will be able to take this turret no problem at all, I'd imagine. Absolutely, just one more auto will do the deal, and Kenny Hammer Spike will walk out with his W passive. Art of War Esports forced to play cleanup here in the bot lane as both objectives are down for a considerable amount of time. This is just food for in the trees to set up traps for AWE to step on. And this is going to be a tricky next few minutes for AWE of how they're supposed to defend this Baron, how they're supposed to avoid taking these fights because honestly, they're not in the greatest position to defend head-to-head -head against in the trees i wouldn't say i don't think they went 5v5 against baron hextech so that's for sure int has not managed to sync up their waves so this three-man squad pushing the bottom side is somewhat vulnerable to a five-man gank i really like the vision control that int is putting together trying to keep this three-man squad safe and now finally the waves are starting to crash on the top side so 
this is the push. This is where the pressure is on, and they might actually be able to get some structures down. And AWE seem to be closing the gap on the three members of INT down here. Trollsing you, meanwhile, on the top is going to be 1v1 involved. Noob, ulti has been dropped. The Shadow Realm is active is not going to look like he is standing much of a chance against this powerhouse. Level 18, Mordekaiser is running a train up in the top lane. And meanwhile, Total Trash with the ultimate there is the engage, does get stunned up by Slops, but the ulti from Kenny Hammerspike turns that around tenfold as a Riri is going down forward. next double kill from guilty. Brock Lee. Brock Lee is going for more letters with the discount Katarina combo. Kenny Hammerspike cleans that one up with a double-double. And Trolls Neal is only left this could be game. With the flow. Is this going to be the Taco Bell special? One of them is going to pick it up. The triple double for INT. And in this close ass game, at the end, they are going to turn it around tenfold again and take their eight and two victory against Art of War. Doing exactly what they had done to them, reversed onto their heads, AWE. Taking the L for this game and INT lifting themselves up further on the stand. Yeah, AWE came into this game looking for revenge, were unable to find it. Some phenomenal play from the bottom side of I INT in that last uh, bit of a fight. Kenny Hammerspike, again, this misfortune looked so good in this series just constantly finding ultimates that obliterated the front line didn't even really need to hit guilty in letters because without a hecarim or a leona or a mordekaiser standing in front of them they're easy prey for he who slops on the nautilus able to clean that up fantastic flash hook catches guilty ends the game on the spot um and int uh once again cementing themselves as the number one team in this league, the team to beat for Heroic League. There's only one team that can win their game and tie in the trees for first place. That will be the very next game you guys are about to see. Very well played from in the trees. Kenny Hammerspike dealing with the front line, GP dealing with the back line, and Volibear, Victor, and Nautilus. Very well concentrated, very well organized team I just witnessed. And what a, what a great game to finish off the first block of games. Now, stay tuned for game number three of the night. We will be right back for that. Don't go anywhere. We will see you soon.